Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. You've read the title of this video, and well, I'll just display what we're creating right here. So let's open up Blender and hop into it. The first thing we want to do is set up our meshes and animation. I'm going to add in a plane just to make topology easy, but you could apply this to any somewhat planar surface on a mesh with a UV map. I'm going to hop into edit mode and subdivide the plane a bit to give us some extra vertices to displace later. While we're here, we may as well rotate it to be sideways too. Next we'll want something that will act as our cutting object. I'm just going to model a quick knife or sword and then we will be right back. We'll need this cutter to be animated, so let's do that real quick. A nice way to animate this is by setting the origin of our knife object to the end of the handle and then just rotate it from there. Add in a keyframe on your starting frame and scrub a few frames forward, adding in another keyframe there once you've rotated your object. Now we should have a very quick slice through the plane. Feel free to modify this animation a bit if you like. And now, we get to the dynamic paint. Go to the physics tab of the cutting object, change its type to brush, and add in a new brush. Set that paint color to a pure white. We now need to change the brush paint settings under the source menu. The paint setting can be left at mesh volume, but I prefer to use mesh volume plus proximity, and then set the distance to something very low. This gives a slightly smoother cutoff. Select the plane and go to its physics tab. We need to enable dynamic paint and make this a canvas object, adding in a new canvas. Change the format to image sequence and up the resolution a bit too. Make sure anti-aliasing is toggled on and increase those substeps. This substep value will depend on the amount of frames it takes for your blade to cut across the plane. If you end up baking out your image sequence and it has a jittery breaking effect like this, you will need a higher substeps value. Let's enable drying and change the value there to 50 frames or so. Then scroll down to the initial color menu and change the type there to color. Set it to a fully black value. Since we set the paint color of the brush to white earlier, we will be able to use both the paint map and the wet map as black and white image sequences for material nodes or displacement. And because we toggled on the drying effect, the wet map will fade over time. Open up that output menu and choose a cache path. Select the UV map for your object and toggle on wet maps to generate those two. Then hit the bake button and let greatness ensue. Now it's time for some displacement. The process is relatively simple. Add in a displace modifier on the plane and create a new texture. Under the texture settings, we need to open up all the images at once and toggle on auto refresh once that's open. This way the texture will update every single frame. Now change the mid level until it matches up with the base object and edit the strength value too. You will likely need to change the coordinates to UV as well for this to work correctly. If you use the wet map instead of the paint map, because of the drying, the cut will fade away over time. Now, what we've done so far is pretty cool, but it is also very simplistic. The next step is actually adding blood to this animation. Initially, I was planning on doing this through fluid simulation, but that won't work, and I want to explain why really quick so you have some background context. With dynamic paint, you can create a vertex group with only the painted vertices, but Mantaflow, Blender's fluid simulation engine, only allows emission of fluid from a vertex group when creating smoke simulations. With liquid sims, it's either the whole mesh emits the fluid or nothing at all. Therefore, until I figure out a better way to do this with fluid simulation, we're going to be using dynamic paint. Go back to your plane and create a new canvas. The process for this is the same as with the cut, just with two extra things, spread and drip. Toggle on spread first and lower that speed value a little bit. Next, turn on drip and lower the gravity a little under the field weight's dropdown. I found that having gravity too high makes the blood flow just a bit too much. To add some variety to the blood, we can add in a force field object. 
The turbulence force field works pretty great for this if you change the size and noise amount. I would experiment with this a bit, but don't make any of it too crazy or the blood will look very weird. Feel free to add more force objects to influence this blood if you wish. Now just bake that image sequence out, making sure that you save the images to a folder other than the one we created for the initial cut. Once that's baked, add in another displacement modifier, create a new texture, and throw that image sequence into the animation. When shading this simulation, I just want you guys to go absolutely crazy. I'm not going to go into specific node values or anything like that, because what you want your simulation to look like could be wildly different than mine. So just remember that you should now have four different image sequences to use as factors. Two for that initial cut, with one of them fading over time, and two for the blood, again with one fading over time. This way you can mix and match with solid colors and fade some of them out if you want your blood to change over time. It's pretty freaking awesome. If you make anything awesome based off the concepts that I showed in this video, then be sure to leave a link to that in the comments section down below, because I'm sure that me and everyone else that's watching this video would love to see what other people are making. Thank you to my generous patrons, also, for making this channel possible. That's Matt, Terry Davis, Susan Uncle, and Atomic Elf. I want to thank you all for watching. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to help me out, and have a great day.